it was really bad. Like the moment I twisted it, like I heard like cracks. Oh my and god. I, I just couldn't move. I thought I like broke my ankle or something. What's up everyone? Happy Thanksgiving. Uh I am Tony and this is the TLC podcast. Um before we get started today, I just want to say I'm th- I'm so thankful for everyone's support, and I will continue to create great content so uh, for people to watch and to listen to, and hopefully learn from. Uh, before, uh, besides that, uh, I do want to remind everyone that Coach Lay and I also started the online physical training class, which is available now to everyone uh, around the world or any club that you're from. It is uh, open to all of you guys. It is not under ZBTC's name. So feel free to DM me uh, in my Instagram down below, or you can email me in my my email down below. And uh, let's get into the podcast today. Today, we got a Thanksgiving special. It is, you know, Thanksgiving and and it's family time. So I thought, why not to bring my big brother uh, onto the show? Uh, he's a 15-time junior nationals champion, a five-time junior Pan Am gold medalist, and he's also the youngest to win adult national title uh, for men and also host a record sale for getting the farthest in junior world championships at top 32 for men twice in a row. And he also qualified to play in the Suderman Cup, uh, Ricky Lujo. What's up, Ricky? Thank you for coming in. Hi, Tony. Thank you for inviting me. For sure, man, for sure. Um, I appreciate you coming in and um, for people that don't know, we actually have a very close relationship, you know, because obviously if if you don't know, Ricky and I don't live together. You know, Ricky lives uh, with my dad and then I live with my mom. So but we still have a very close relationship. So w- what is like your most memorable memory of me? It doesn't have to be badminton. It can be, it be badminton. It doesn't have to be badminton. Um, I think uh, I think the most like memorable thing about you was that you we would always fight and then um you would always say i have to you know let you win or let you get the thing you want because you're younger than me and then it just like bothers me a lot because whenever like we get into some argument or some fight you just bring that up and i just have to like let you go and like <laughs> or let you have the thing Mm-hmm. so that was, that was pretty memorable yeah 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 the thing about ricky is like a lot of people don't know because you know sometimes if ricky's not too close to you he may not he may seem kind of quiet and he doesn't talk too much but ricky's actually very outgoing and like he's like one of the you know best brothers you can have every time we get in the fight like ricky said he always gives me whatever i want you know he's not like the kind of sibling that would just take it and be like no i don't want to give you it you know so he would always give it give everything to me and be very nice to me so i do appreciate that um but my most memorable uh my most memorable memory of ricky was um i don't know what specific tournament was but we were playing a tournament in ocbc and then it was a long long time ago we were super young and I had a bad day that day. I'm, I'm guessing I probably lost some games and I was just not feeling great. And then I was trying to talk to my, uh, talk to coach Lay, you know, my mom, and she was kind of busy with some parents and she couldn't really hear me at the time. So I got really sad and upset. So I ran out the gym and like, I just started, like I ran out of the gym near OCBC. There's like a movie theater and there's like this like sidewalk stuff. Right. So I, I like walked towards the sidewalk and I was just like crying and then Ricky, apparently, I think she, he saw me come out. I don't know. You can tell me your side of the story, but he saw me come out, I think. And he ran after me and then he made me feel better. He was comforting me and then he brought me back and then, you know, brought me to uh, my mom. And then, you know, we kind of sort things out and it was fine afterwards. But yeah, that was that was very memorable for me because, you know, it showed that he cared a lot and it was just great. What was your side of the story? What, what did you use, like, do you remember? I, I didn't remember until you, like, said this story. Um, well, Thinking back on that, I, I, I remember I just watched, uh, wa- uh, so you ran out and I was just like, you know, why did you go out? And, you know, we're in a tournament. So I just followed out and saw you crying outside. <laughs> so <laughs> I just went up and comforted you and it's like, it's all good. You know, uh, yeah. like stuff happens, you know, you win, you lose. So mm-hmm. and then just brought, brought you back in. Yeah. Yeah. It, it was, it was a nice moment for me. And then, but yeah, definitely. I appreciate it. And obviously, you know, our parents are coaches, right? And both, you know, dad is the head coach of UBC and then mom is the head coach of ZBTC. Um, wh- what is it like to be like the head coach's son? Because I think a lot of people want to know. Yes. Um, being the head coach's son, it's like kind of like a both side thing. It's, all, it's motivation and it's like pressure at the same time. 
um, you know, you feel pressure as like everyone's watching you. Like if you're doing well, that means this this head coach is good. But if you're not doing very well, that means something's wrong with, you know, Coach Coach Liu or Coach Lei's teaching. Um, I mean, it's motivation at the same time is because, you know, you're always in like the spotlight. Everyone's always watching you. So I always try to work hard and, you know, try to be the best I can, you know, yeah. Yeah, definitely. And I think, you know, a lot of people, I don't know about you, Ricky, but definitely a lot of parents or, or players actually come up to me and are, is like, you know, you're so lucky. Your mom is like the head coach. I wish my mom was the head coach, you know, like, and, and I can learn from her. And so I was like, man, don't even say it. It's, it's completely different. You know, once you get put into our shoes, it's like, there's, there's, of course, there's a good size. And then there's the, the negative size to it, where there's the pressure, right? The amount of pressure, because whatever you do, uh, like it directly inf- affects the business because, you know, the, the parents or the players are like, just like Ricky said, you know, if, if Tony or Ricky is not doing well, then that's probably because, you know, the coaches are not doing well. Like their, their mom or dad is not a good coach because they're the sons. They should be like the best. Right. So there's definitely um, a lot of pressure, like, like Ricky said. Um, but have you ever been judged by parents before, Ricky? And if so, like, how did you deal with it? What do you mean by like judged by parents? Like, Just like-, like, you know how, like, uh, I don't know about you, but I definitely got parents who who come up to me and are like, you know, like, why why are you like, like, I don't know. I I, I feel like just this like, I would say, like parents coming up and saying, hey, why why are you playing like 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 not as good as that guy, or why are you why aren't you doing this, or why aren't you doing that like that? Actually, uh, that never happened to me because. I think, um, well, I just don't think anyone has said that to me or asked me that. It's just, uh, I don't think that's something people will ask me. Yeah. I think it's because it's a little different for Ricky because Ricky's always been a champion, you know, always been a champion, always been the best. And I think because I have Ricky as my brother, I get, I get judged (laughs) a lot. I get judged by parents. Parents come up to me like, how come Ricky's so good? And then you're like, you're not as good. I'm like, you know, I get that a lot. I do have people coming up to me and ask me, like, uh, how bad can you be a brother? <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah, but I do get that a lot. I mean, that is – I mean, I'm the youngest one in the family. For the people that don't know, there's Ricky. There's our cousins. Both of them are, you know, older than me. And, like, I'm the youngest and the smallest guy. I'm the shortest guy in the family, too, out of all the guys. So – yeah, I get I get that a lot from a lot of parents and, and people like that. But definitely, um, you you obviously matured a lot earlier than most people, right? Because you started winning championships right off the bat. You're very hardworking, um, more than anybody else, right? And how were you able to um, mature so fast when you were young? I mean, I feel like um, I was the same with like uh, all the other like same age kids, as in like outside the court. But, you know, since uh, both, like you said, both their parents, um, you know, play professional badminton, uh, I got to, you know, I got into badminton, into professional badminton, like a lot earlier than many, many other of my friends or like other people that played. So therefore, I was, I guess, a little more mature on the court when I first started since I experienced badminton for a longer time than them. Yeah. And like... I just want to say, like, Ricky, I think he loved badminton. He truly, like, like from his heart, he loved playing it. Right, Ricky? Am I right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, I did not. I, I hated it in the beginning. So I think that's also makes a big difference, you know, for when you're a kid, like, you got to really love it for you to put that work in, especially in the beginning when it's tough. Because when you're young, you know, you, you kind of don't get it that much. And it's all just out of passion if you like it or not. Right. And, yeah, for me, that wasn't the case. I, I didn't like it at all. I was tired. I was a fat kid, so it's tough for me to run around a lot. So I definitely did enjoy it. But Ricky definitely did. He loved playing every time. Like my mom or or, or my dad would say, "Let's go train." And I'd be like, "Oh, dang it! Why do we have to train when we're together?" But Ricky's like, "Yeah, let's go train." And I'm like, "Oh my god!" But yeah, definitely. I think passion has a lot to do with it. And speaking of you know working hard, you have always been disciplined during training, right? Um, how were you able to maintain it throughout the years? 
I mean, I feel like there's always time that, you know, you slack off and you don't want to train. But I guess that one is for like my motivation of uh, my passion for badminton that's like motivating me. Uh, a second is, you know, once you get like a first place or like a champion, um, you felt what it's like to, to stand on the podium, you know, above everyone, right? And that feeling it's, you know, I don't know how to like um, describe it, but it's, it's really good. So you wanna, I wanted to keep achieving that, you know, position and like feeling all the time. So that's what's like motivated, motivated me like um, to you know, work harder and to like keep up with all my work. Yeah, to train harder. Yeah, I think. And also, like, yeah, as ahead. I grew older, like, uh, yeah, as I grew older, um, I saw like other badminton players, other like different players that are like a lot better than me, and like higher age groups, uh, which also motivated me to be like them or to like go uh, go beyond them, beat them. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. And I think a lot of people don't realize this, you know, when they see Ricky on the court, you know, everybody thinks like, wow, he's so talented. He's big, he's tall, he's strong. But what people don't realize is Ricky puts in so much work, you know, in badminton and it's not just all talent. He may have some talent, you know, he's, he, you know, one thing he does really well is, you know, when, when a coach tells him something, he remembers it he, right away. He, he doesn't need somebody reminding him over and over again, like me, but like he remembers it right away, sticks to his mind. He focuses on it. Right. But, but he definitely has, besides talent, he works so hard. Like people don't realize, cause I see it, you know, because I'm his brother, but people don't realize how hard he works. The amount of time he puts inside the, uh, his craft is just uh, overwhelming. So definitely it's important that people work hard and have that discipline to, you know, get what they want. And in 2009, uh, you played your first nationals and won a triple crown, which is, you know, he, he, he's champion right off the start, right? He's just, Ricky's just amazing, right? And one of the gold medals you won was with me and you had to carry me throughout the tournament. Um, how did it win a title? How did it feel to win a title with me? I mean, it was like a long time ago, but yeah. um, from what I remember, it, it was like, uh, that was also my first time going into a tournament, you know, um, and winning with you, like winning with my brother, I guess it's like a little kind of different feeling than winning by myself or winning with like a different partner. It's that like, I guess I'm more, um, I feel better because, you know, I did what a brother should do to like guide you and like, like you said, carry you basically. <laughs> yeah. And yeah, I just thought like, um, I did well. I know I made a good role model. I gotta keep doing that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Um, I appreciate what you did because that was also my first nationals title for me. And without it, I don't know like if I would be where I am right now because I needed that confident boost, right? Because because what I hear from everybody else is like you're not as good you're not good enough, right? Because I'm the younger one and I'm I'm actually just not good enough, right? I'm not as good as Ricky, but um, it did give me a confident boost that helped me continue to, you know, be successful by myself, you know, in the later years, um, winning titles with, with different partners and, and doing all kinds of uh, stuff like that. So yeah, I definitely appreciate what you did. And ever since 2009, you know, um, you've been getting many titles and triple crowns, just winning after one after the other. Ricky always gets triple crowns. He was like the triple crown every single tournament back then. And, but in 2014, you had to completely change your training uh, because of your knee injuries. You had severe um, overused knees. I think the doctor said like you um, had like 80 year old person's knees or something. And uh, like, it wasn't that bad. <laughs> it wasn't like that. Yeah, but but um, <laughs> what happened and uh, what steps did you take to recover from it? I mean, I guess uh, I used them too much. Like I, I trained too much, like actually trained too much and like overused them a lot. Uh, that's why I, like, like even when I walked, they were like hurting, right? And then during that time, 
I just had like um, my training, like basically cut all the movement stuff out. And I was just doing like um, like practice shots that were like standing still and like just not moving at all, basically. Yeah, and during that time I had uh, physical therapy yeah, with uh, Coach Bing. Um, yeah, like I think three to four times a week to like help me recover from the knee injury. Yeah, yeah definitely. And um, yeah, you had to do a lot of stuff, I remember, because mom was always talking to you about it and then stuff like that and just trying to get you back on the court, right? And what people don't realize, you know, when he gets the overused knees, it's from training. It's not from like tournaments where he hurt himself or, or whatever it may be. And like, it, it just shows how dedicated, you know, Ricky is. Cause when, you know, when we were like, even now, you know, you know, my mom, Coach Lei, she likes to like hold our hands and stuff when, when we're in the car or something like that. And she, she could tell the difference between Ricky and my hand because my hand is like so like soft and, and plump because like I don't really work that hard. But then Ricky's hands is like all like callous and like just tough, right? It's like, it's like holding like, it's like holding like plat, like it's just like very tough and it, it's like scratched up and, and, and he has blisters and stuff. And yeah, but it just shows how, how dedicated Ricky is. But obviously you successfully healed your knees and you eventually made it to the uh, Junior Pan Ams in 2014. Um, we actually uh, made it to Pan Ams together for that one as well for doubles. And we played Brian Yang in the finals and we lost. Okay. And, um, but you knew that you had to play Brian Yang again in the finals for singles. Um, how did you feel going into that game? I mean, uh, since like that year, like I didn't, I basically cut my training like more than half off. Um, you know, not a lot of people like thought I would make it that far to the finals. Um, so going into that game, I remember I just was feeling that, you know, I got to let everything off, you know, even though we lost doubles, um, it doesn't matter. Like, I don't want to think about it. It, it. Don't let it affect me. And then just go into that game, like completely fresh, um, try to, get my mindset, you know, straight and make sure like I focus on the game instead of like every everything else. Yeah. Yeah. And to be honest, that doubles game that we played against Brian, that was completely my fault. Like I played so trash that game. I was just like, I was not being myself and it was just bad. I think we definitely had a chance to win though, but yeah. Um, but talking about, you know, the, the singles game between you and Brian, it was a super tight game and it got into the third game. And I think you were falling behind, right? Um, yeah, so how did you feel when, when, when you were behind and, and you needed to get the score back up? Um, it's an interesting story. Um, so I was uh, falling behind by quite a bit their game, I remember. And, um, and then I remember I just, I was tired. And I remember the night before I didn't have a, I didn't really sleep because of all the mosquitoes in the, <laughs> yeah. in the room. And it was yeah. like super hot. Right. Mm -hmm. um, so like, I was so tired. I really like couldn't move anymore. And I was behind by like five, six points, I think. Yeah. Or, or even more like um, on the third game. So that's like on the third game, if you're behind that much, you're at that age, you're kind of, kind of lost it already, but I just didn't know what to do. And I, I was desperate. <laughs> so I just like, I remember one point I just yelled as loud as I can and try to boost myself, boost, the, boost my confidence, you know, try to push, push through it. Uh, I remember after that yell, like I almost blacked out, like my, <laughs> in front, like it was black in front of me. But after that yell, I try to, I, I don't know. It, I kind of went into the zone um and then I just went off after that I caught up and and I just and I just won the game yeah yeah definitely I, I remember because I was watching that game and then when you yelled I could tell you were like a little off and then I remember you know mom always mom told you like 
to like just chill like just conserve your energy because it was like you you were everyone could tell you were just like very gassed right and you were out and so but yeah you finished the game and that was probably one of the the, the greatest games right you, you've played and besides brian you know another player that gave you a, a tough time you know on the court was goku i think he's one year older than you too uh goku kaliana sandrum uh he's obviously one of the best singles players in junior badminton you know at the time uh how did it feel to play against goku what made his game uh unique um yeah he's a he's definitely one of the best singles players um in the u.s uh i mean <clears throat> so in junior badminton um there's like a problem with most players is that is consistency basically um and goku is really good with, you know, keeping the rallies going and also ha- making them like really good quality rallies. So most times, you know, he's not like a person that has like a super strong smash or like, like a super like accurate drop or something. It, it's it's his consistency basically. Um, he just, you know, rallies you out and all his rallies are really like in really good condition. And, you know, you just have, the only way you beat him is either you, you know, you keep up with him, you rally with him until he makes a mistake or, you know, or you just have to (laughs) break through that. Yeah. So, you know, a lot of players during that time um, just don't have the consistency, uh, Mm -hmm. you know, and uh, Goku is just really good with, you know, keeping keeping the rally going and keeping them really in really good like condition like quality yeah definitely i think um i think consistency comes with like maturity as well for like these junior players once they like reach like under 19 under 17 they start getting some of that consistency players start getting that but goku was just on another level he just he was just his consistency was just great you know he could keep a rally going for a long time and he, he wouldn't even sweat for it but yeah that definitely goku's a great player and fast forward to 2016 um, you actually played in the 2016 Junior World Championships where you got in top 32 the first time in the draws for doubles, uh, which is still the record, uh, by the way, for today uh, for any U.S. male player. Uh, how did it feel to set that record? And what was your takeaway from that experience? I mean, <clears throat> um, that was my first World Junior Championship, basically. Uh, I remember it was in Spain. Um, so that was my first time seeing badminton like internationally basically that was my kind of my first international tournament and then i saw like so many great players um from all over the world and you know after seeing them i thought i i i realized how badminton is like around the world basically and how people play how better people how top players play badminton and how they play different from me and which i remember after um that tournament even though i got top 32 i came back i had to rethink if i wanted to continue badminton or not um since i saw what it's like out there um but in the end that turned that turned to motivation for me to you know work harder and just yeah wanted to you know keep up with them and Mm -hmm. go beyond that yeah yeah there was definitely a change after you came back from that tournament I mean we all noticed it I mean at least like our family members you know we noticed the change because it was a different gear of training right and after that experience you know you wanted to prepare for the 2017 junior world championships and you wanted to win that one right and um, what was your training schedule like before like during that year of getting ready Mm, that year yeah I, I worked really hard that year um especially uh I remember I was waking up like 4 30 or like five somewhere around that like every day basically I think five, six times a week to go to the gym after after uh, like I would go to the gym and then and then come come home eat breakfast go to school and then I asked school hey, Ricky, like Ricky, can, you, can, you, can you say that again? Because you were like uh, lagging a little bit. Like the, oh, okay. So yeah. I remember um, 
I would go to the gym before school and then um and then come and then eat breakfast and then go to school I remember I finished school at like 3 30 and then I go to the badminton gym right away um I try to finish like my homework during school um you know even though I was in high school but I think I was in like sophomore year so it was okay I was in junior um I tried to finish my homework in school and I would go straight to the courts and do have I think start like an hour or like an hour half early before training and then do do the training and then after training I would do extra like physical or weights you know and then I would go home and then eat and and do homework and stuff and repeat that like the whole the every day basically yeah every day guys every day and I'm not joking like he like because like we've went to I think it was what gym was it was it 24 hours or was, yeah or yeah was it 24 hours or 48 hours I forgot 24 24 hours 24 hours, 24 hours okay like uh we went one night to um to check check up on him and then we went to 24 hours me and uh, coach lay my our mom and um we went to go check up on him see what he's doing and he's just in there you know it's like what like 11 o'clock at night or something like it was pretty late yeah. it was pretty late and he was just <laughs> hauling ass he was like lifting tires and stuff he was he was hauling ass right with his friend i think miles was there or something like that i forgot yeah. who yeah somebody was there and um yeah, yeah they were just yeah they were running together and just exercising and then yeah i mean i knew he was hard working right so it wasn't too surprising for me but i just like I know how tough that is because I've tried to wake up in the morning before school. I've done that one year, you know, waking up in the morning before school, but I was more pushed than I wanted to. But um, I know how tough it is. Cause when you wake up in the morning, especially during winter time, like right now, like it's cold and it's like, you don't want to get out of bed. And it's just really, really tough. People don't understand how tough that is, you know, and for you to get out of bed, go to the gym, you know, you know, when you, when it's hard for you to do something, you kind of don't want to do it. Like, oh, it takes some, I still got to drive to the gym and it's not like I can just do it at home. Right. So it, you have to go that extra step, go to the gym, do the workout, come back, shower and then eat. And so it's, it's very tough. People don't understand that. And that's why Ricky is able to win so many titles and, and everything that he does. It's not just like he has talent and he can do, you know, everything without much work. He really puts in the work every single day, you know, and he really, you know, bleeds badminton. Right. And it pays off, right? In 2017, you make it uh, on the Junior Pan Am team uh, event, right? And that year, it was in Canada, and Canada was stacked with amazing players, including, you know, Brian Yang, and they were also playing on their home court, right? And what was the discussion between the team players and the coaches before the day of the matches? You mean before, like, day of the final, or? Yeah, the day of the final, yeah. Against because, Canada. oh, yeah, we played in the finals. Um, so the day before the finals, um, I remember <clears throat> we had like a team meeting at like eight or nine um, with Coach Lei and Coach Chiu in the hotel. Uh, I remember like uh, Coach Lei and Coach Chiu took out like a whole chart that they made of like all the combinations that we can have and like all the combinations that Team Canada would have you know, and they like calculated the, uh, the like the possibilities of which combination and the best combination to go against what Team Canada might have. Like it was crazy. We're all like, oh my god, <laughs> this is crazy. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, but yeah, and then we can tell the coaches worked so hard to you know try to make us win that fight basically, and seeing that like give give us like really like a confident boost that night and at least it, it gave me a confident boost um so i just told myself i gotta win i have to win uh tomorrow basically yeah 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 that game was very important you know for for team usa because we haven't won one in like what two years and um it was pretty important to all the players on the team as well for you guys to uh win that chip right and team canada is no joke guys they're they're strong right right Ricky they're pretty strong <laughs> like they're stacked with good players and um you played doubles with Utang uh in the finals right during that team match against Canada how much pressure were you feeling to win the game I mean um it, it was definitely like a lot of pressure since like 
everyone's watching you, right? You're the only four that's playing, you know, and this is like team event. And so I was on second with Yutang, um, with Terrence, and Goku just played and yeah. he lost to Brian. So we, we were already down like one point. Um, so I remember I was pretty nervous, but you know, I had to just, I had to like get into the game quickly. And luckily we finished in two games. Um, I think, but I think the second game, um, the score was like 25, 23 or like 26, 24, something like that. Yeah. Oh no, 24, 22. Yeah, it was like really close. Yeah. yeah. It, it was really intense. Like, um, I remember me and Yutane was just like, trying to like, um, tell each other that, you know, God do this. Whenever, whenever we win a point, we're like, let's go one more. Come on. Like, yeah. Yeah. It, you guys were fired. It was a really intense and memorable game. Yeah. You guys were like so fired up on the court yelling and, and like, just like high fiving. It was, it was such good energy, you know? And then the USA crowd was crazy loud too. Cause we wanted to win. Everybody wanted to win all the junior players, everybody who was watching all the parents, we were cheering for the team and it was just great energy in the, in the, in the arena. And um, obviously you had say eventually won the team event in uh, Canada's home court. And it was three to one against Canada. Uh, I think it was you guys won doubles, right? You and you Tang, and then it was uh, girls singles. I think it was Jenny, and then it was girls doubles that you guys won uh, for the third one. And then it was just crazy. How did it feel to win? It felt good. I don't know how how to like describe it. It's like um, I, it kind of, it's kind of different from like winning like in the individual events. Mm -hmm. Is because like we worked so hard as a team together, you know um spending time with the team you know getting used to each other right getting used to like getting used to like your teammates um and you know basically fighting on the court together it's just a lot different than individual events um that's why like still now i motivate like younger uh kids or like my students to to try to you know make it to the team event because it's a totally different you know experience than just going as individuals yeah yeah definitely definitely um because you know obviously you spend so much time i know how much time you spend with the team and the coaches spend a lot of time with you guys and you know everybody puts in the work you know even though you see some players even though they if they don't play the game they're making that sacrifice to sit and let you know the the other players play the the matches right it's very important we um recognize you know, everyone, because that sacrifice is very important because without that, you know, maybe we won't have what we have right now. Right. So it's um, definitely it's a different spirit, right? It's team spirit. And yeah, that's that's really amazing. And after that, Junior Pan Ams, um, you played 2017 Junior World Championships, the second one where you got top 32 this this time um, for singles. Right. Once again, and this time for singles. Right. And what was that experience like? I mean, um, it was like, uh, I mean, I worked really hard that year. Um, and then on the court, I just wanted to, I just wanted to simply win every match. Um, and I got to top 32, I think. Mm -hmm. Honestly, I really wanted to get further, <laughs> but sadly I lost. Um, but, you know, I wasn't like really shocked with my results. You know, I thought I deserved it, right? Um, yeah, it was. Yeah, definitely. I mean, you, I think the last game you played that you lost, it was like super tight, right? Second game? Third game, we played three games. Oh, third game, yeah. And then I think third game was like 2018 or 2019. I played yeah, Crystal yeah. Pobo from France, yeah. Uh, so what's funny is that um, in 2016, in doubles, I lost his older brother. <laughs> uh, I forgot what, what his name was. Something pop off. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And then I lost, to, <laughs> I lost to him, like, the second year. And it was – he played like he played like me, too. Like, we were we – had, we had, like, the, the same playing style. And he was also left-handed. Um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I really want to win that game. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. But, you know, everything happens for a reason, right? And 
yeah. um, in 2017, besides, you know, getting all those stuff done and, and checking off the list, you also won your adult nationals titles for doubles against uh, the Olympians, Philip Chu and Sarawak, um, which also set the record for the youngest player to ever win a title, you know, for adult nationals. What was that experience like to play against these players? Uh, that, that, that tournament was definitely a um, good experience for me because, you know, I, I got to play in, like, um, the, like, adult, adult pool, basically. The, it's not junior anymore. Like, <clears throat> it's, like, a different level, basically. Um, and playing against – I remember playing against uh, Philip Shu and Sadawat, uh was definitely another experience as they went to the Olympics in 2016. And it was just totally different from juniors. You know, I played so, like a lot of the coaches in that tournament and a lot of great players and like in the adults. Um, it's just uh, a completely different level. Like they're a lot faster, a lot stronger, a lot mature on the court. Um, yeah, it, it really like taught me a lot that tournament. And, you know, really boosted my confidence when I won. Yeah, basically. But I was I was really happy, you know. I was I thought like I paid, it paid off with all my training that year too. Yeah. So Yeah. You definitely deserved it with all that work because uh it it was crazy. And besides playing adult nationals, you know, you also played in the Suderman Cup trials and won first in doubles with Kyle Emmerich. Um, however, like not everything, you know, was going your way, right, for this tournament. What happened and uh, how were you able to overcome it? Uh, so basically, um, I remember like two days before the, uh, I don't know, three days before the tournament, uh, I was training basically. Uh, and then I think I was like super tired. So I twisted my ankle and that was actually like my first injury in badminton. I never twisted the ankle before. <laughs> um, um, but it was really bad. Like the moment I twisted it, like I heard like cracks. Oh my and God. I, I just couldn't move. I thought I like broke my ankle or something. Uh-huh. And then, you know, Coach Lou and like my dad just like, yeah, you just twisted your ankle. But like mm-hmm. it was really bad. Like I couldn't move it at all. I couldn't stand on that foot because it hurt so much and it was swollen. And you know, like I'm really like inflexible. So, yeah. so that really <laughs> affected me a lot because mm-hmm. if you're flexible and you're just it, it, it's bad, but it's not like that bad. Mm-hmm. But it, it, really, it was really bad for me. Um, yeah. So I went on the plane with the twisted angle, like had to like keep my feet up. Mm-hmm. And then when I got off the plane, it was like completely swollen. And I remember the day before the tournament, I still couldn't really, I still couldn't like move my foot. I, I, I could barely stand on the ground. Mm-hmm. And then I was just so depressed and <laughs> I wanted to win because, you know, I was there with my partner, Kyle, right? I didn't want to, you know, make him, you know, look like just forfeit the game, you know, since he came all the way from L.A. and stuff. Um, so the next day when we started, I had played three events that tournament too. So the next day we th- uh, I, when we started, I had to wrap my foot up like completely. So it so stay still. And I remember eating like, three, four pills of Advil every game to make sure, like, I don't feel the pain. I just want to push through that. And, I mean, I don't know how, but <laughs> I won uh, in the end with Kyle, you know. Yeah. I couldn't even I couldn't even feel my hand at that time. Like, I ate so much Advil. It's <laughs> crazy. Don't do that, kids. Don't do that. That's just for Ricky. Don't do that. That's not good for you. The a bad um, example. Just, yeah. if you're injured... Like when I think back on it, like when if you're injured, just just take it off, just just yeah. go rest, you know. Because you, after that, because after that tournament, you know, my ankle injury just got worse, like so much worse, and it, it didn't heal. So yeah. even now, like you know, it still affects me. So yeah, 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 it, yeah. So kids, don't don't do that. Don't do that. That's just. You know, Ricky, he, he, he's very like, just, 
like I'm crazy. You know, he, yeah, he he goes all out to win a win a game. So don't do that. That's not good for you. Um, but you live and you learn. You know. Uh, what I wonder, like, what did Kyle say when you told him you twisted your ankle? He's like, "Why are you still here then?" And then I'm just like, <laughs> "I want to win." <laughs> Wait, you, you know, didn't tell like, him? I, I told tell him. him before. I told him, and then so what's funny with Kyle is that every time I play a tournament with him, mm-hmm. I'm like either injured or like. I'm some some way like unable to play <laughs> and then like so I remember that time I was like I touched my ankle and he's like what like just don't come like mm-hmm. just rest right mm-hmm. he's a really caring guy he always like cares for me you know because yeah. I'm a lot younger than him and he, he didn't want me to get worse right mm-hmm. so but I was like no Kyle I, I wanted to win and then he's like okay then let's do this and yeah. So. Yeah, Kyle's a nice guy. Kyle's a nice guy. Um, I've met him and I played against him one time in uh, I think it was Berkeley, and he really nice guy. Um, really outgoing. Did you beat him? No, we came close though. <laughs> we came close though. But he was he's a good player too. He's a good player too. Um, but yeah, that that's crazy. You know these stories and, um, obviously when when we play, you know when we're together in training, we always spar against each other or like I like to challenge you. You know, even though I know I was going to lose, but I, every single time I tell you right now, every single time I challenge you, I, I, I tell myself I'm going to win. I always like have the confidence that I'm going to beat Ricky today. Every single time you, no matter how many times I lost to Ricky, I always go into the game thinking that I will win this game for the first time, you know, but it never happens, but it doesn't matter. Uh, You were always, you know, a motivation for me to get better. Right. But um, was I able to motivate you at all? Yeah. You, you were actually because you know being like an older brother to you like I had to make sure I was better than you I didn't yeah. want you to beat me basically um and I know the day that you beat me you're <laughs> going to be very cocky uh-huh. and yeah. yeah it's gonna be bad so mm-hmm. I can't let you beat me and that motivated me as well yeah mm-hmm. um yeah you know just to give everyone some perspective if you ever watched Naruto it was like it was like I was Naruto and then like Ricky was Sasuke. Like I can, I just keep going at him, but he just keeps like kicking me off and then just keeps beating me every single time. So yeah, it was it was really annoying. And but I I didn't give up. I every single time I just kept going at him, I guess. I, I mean it wasn't very challenging for him too. He always goes easy on me to give me a couple points. That's why maybe like, maybe it's maybe it's not like Naruto and Sasuke because Sasuke because you know they're kind of close like their level is kind of close maybe like Sasuke and Itachi <laughs> okay fine fine Sasuke, yeah yeah that's a better one that's a better uh better comparison yeah basically like I wasn't close but I always just keep going at him thinking that I am like better than him but yeah um yeah that that's we just spar against each other and, and have that I think I really enjoy it you know it's like some some highlights in our badminton journey right just playing against each other and we played a couple times in tournaments too and I lost every single time, except this one time in the charity tournament. Um, it was me and Jimmy against you and Yu Tang. And in my opinion, it was like the funnest game we've ever, I've ever played because I, I was yelling. I was like, it was just so hype. Everyone was watching. It was a great game. And it was my first time ever beating you in a tournament. Um, how did you feel playing that game? Um, I mean, it was definitely a good game. You did really well that game, too. Um, I mean, I played so many tournaments. Like that game was just like any other tournament, any other games that I played in the tournament. Um, but playing against you was really fun, you know. Um, but I did try my best on the court, and you did really well that game, and you beat me. Thank you. That's good. Thank you. You know, it's very, it's hard. Like. Like Ricky usually doesn't try when he plays me, but it's nice that he actually went hard. And I want to say, you know, Jimmy is like older than all of us. So Jimmy's like more experienced and he kind of carried me to, to, to win the game. But Jimmy, Jimmy knew how much the game mean to me because every single time I play against Ricky, I want to win so bad because I never win. Okay. So um, it, it was very important to me and Jimmy knew that. So Jimmy was really pumped with me and we were yelling really loud in court. And you know, you know, what's funny. One of the parents that was watching, I'm not going to say who, but one of the parents that was watching said to, uh, you know, our aunt, and then she told me later on, but the parent was like, why, why is Tony and Jimmy yelling so hard at his brother? Like, that's so rude. But like, people don't realize, like, 
I yell because number one, I want to beat him. Number two, because Ricky is a good player, right? If I if Ricky not a good player, why would I yell? I don't give, I don't care, right? But because I have that respect for Ricky as a as a badminton player and how good he is, I have more motivation to win. Okay, and that's why we and that's why we yell, right? That's what we do in tournaments, you know. And right, Ricky, would you agree? Yeah, I think like yelling is not like being rude. It's more like it's definitely like a confident like for some people it's a confident boost or it's a way to like relieve pressure mm -hmm. relieve stress on the court basically it's yeah. it's really normal it's not like yeah. if you yell at an opponent you're rude to them it's it's really normal in, in badminton yeah. yeah yeah and keep in keep in mind everyone like that game it was like my best chance to beat ricky like that was like my highest chance of being ricky. So i was not gonna let it go i was just giving i was just letting everything in me out all those years of losing I just let it out and I was just finally able to clinch a win, but that was my only one. Um, he beat me on the, all, the, all the other ones, uh, <laughs> but yeah, it, it was great that game. And now that you're in Santa Barbara, right? After you finish a junior badminton, and, um, do you still play badminton or do you still, uh, do you still want to go pro? Uh, yeah, I still play badminton and uh, I still used to train in Santa Barbara, but like, I mean, it's COVID right now, um, I'm back home. Uh, so for going pro, like, um, I wanted to, I want to finish school first, really. And then to see where I'm at and if I think, um, I'm still into it. Like I, sh I think I still have a chance. I probably go continue the badminton road, but you know, it really depends on how my body, how my physique is like after I finish college and yeah, it's. It's really hard to like not dedicate all your time to training and for like a few years and go back at it. You know, if you're like a professional athlete, you should know like even like a couple weeks, you know, of, tra of like not training or like not training as much, you feel different. You know, yeah. you will feel heavy. You will feel you're losing the your, your feelings on the court, your feelings with the racket. Yeah. So it's hard. Um, I'm still thinking on that. Yeah. Yeah. That, that's, yeah, this, it's for everyone, you know, like, you know, Mike Tyson is actually fighting tonight. I don't know if you know, Ricky. Um, and he's like really old. He hasn't fight in a long time, but he, you know, he had to get it back in shape and it's just, it's really tough for players, you know, professional players to get back after like a year of not playing or, or like, you know, it's really tough. People don't realize that. And, you, you, Ricky actually plays a lot of basketball in Santa Barbara for the people that don't know. Um, what position do you play again, Ricky? I play like many positions. I play like, uh, sometimes I play center if I'm like, if I'm like uh, the taller ones on, on the team, but um, more like power forward. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Ricky's yeah. actually really good. Ricky's actually really good at basketball. He, he's been playing basketball for a long time, but he just played a little more in Santa Barbara, but yeah um all right now we're going to the fun question of the day um what is it like to have tony as a brother or as your brother uh i don't know what it's like for other people to have a brother but as for me like uh tony was always like was like a like a little baby basically <laughs> uh, he, he used to cry and whine a lot but you know mm -hmm. i don't know i don't know it's I don't even think I'm a lot, like, that much older than him. I'm only two years older than him, but I just see him as, like, a lot younger than me. Mm -hmm. And I try to, you know, I try to comfort him yeah. <laughs> and, like, make sure he's good all the time. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, he's definitely um, – it's a pretty fun – he's a pretty fun kid to be yeah. around with. He's pretty funny. Um, yeah. And he, make people, he makes people dates. I mean, uh, people's dates, yeah. And it's just – it's, it's nice uh, having him as a brother, yeah. Thank you. I appreciate it, Ricky. Um, yeah, I think Ricky knows how much, like, sometimes how much pressure I am in to, like, like be at his level because um, I do get judged a lot by everybody, you know, and, and I think he gets that. And sometimes he tries to make me feel, you know, that I'm good enough, you know, where I am. And I don't need to, like, feel bad, you know, if I'm not achieving something, right? And he does that, and I, I do appreciate it. And... You know, having Ricky as a brother, you know, he's very comforting. Like he said, very, very, um, he's very nice to you. He doesn't fight with you too much, right? And what was I going to say? I was going to say some. Um, 
Ricky, oh, man, I I just lost the thought in my head. What the heck? Um, but yeah, R- Ricky's obviously a great brother. Um, we don't live together a lot, so but um, we sometimes have disagreements. You know, on on you know we have different values sometimes, but no matter what, you know, we always um, make up and we just keep going. And you know, whatever happens, you know, if he needs help, I'm there. If I need help, he's always there for me. And we always have each other's backs, you know, and I appreciate that, you know, and yeah, so that that's, man, there's something in my head that I didn't say that it's like bothering me. What the heck? Oh my God. Okay. I can't think of it right now. Maybe if I remember it later, I'll bring it up. Um, but yeah. Um, yeah, that, that's the end of all the questions. Now we're going to get into the viewers questions. Um, so the first question, um, who is your favorite mix partner? I mean, um, I actually got this question asked a lot by like a lot of people. Um, I mean, I don't have like a favorite mix partner, um, because like you know, I I remember I my mix mix partners were Joanna, Angela, and like Carrie. I think they were like three of my main like mix partners, um, but. I don't have typically have like a favorite because they play uh so different like all three of them all have like different playing styles um and I think you know like it was a pleasure to play to to be their like mixed partner as well and I they're, they're really good and I just think like in 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 the matches like um it's kind of the same is you just have to work with them and to you know to try to to reach the same goal basically to get to win the game so i don't think we have like a favor or something ricky dodged that question really well guys he he, he just curveballed that one but it's all right i i know um he, he's had many mixed partners and i understand um next question next question do you think tony can ever beat you people ask this a lot do you think tony can ever beat you no yeah, because it's, it's over just, already. It's, a, it's a simply no. <laughs> yeah, it's over. It's over already, guys. I have no chance. It's over already. So yeah, um, I I would love though. I would love to beat him again, but well, it, I don't think I'll get that chance. But it's okay. Uh, next question: Have you bageled Tony before? I think like once. No, no, no. You never bageled me before. Yeah, I'm, I I definitely bageled you once. It was it was in UBC when we were like really young. Um, I remember like I bageled you, and then our grandparents, um, like our grandparents from like my, like from dad's side, was here, mm-hmm. and then they're like, "Why did you beat him so bad?" And then uh, I was just like, "Was it training I or was it training or tournament?" It was, it was no, it was just like a game you wanted to play. We wanted to oh, play, okay. and, like yeah. yeah, it was like one game. I bageled uh-huh. you once. Yeah. Uh, see one game i always just play one game because i yeah, know you always I just play one game, game yes. i always just play one game because and I then know tony will say he didn't beat me because we only played one game yeah, yeah. that's what tony yeah. will always say yeah because if he didn't beat me in two games that's not a game it doesn't count it's not a match you know? <laughs> yeah that's right it's not a match it doesn't count but yeah definitely i don't i mean now that i think about it maybe you bagel me but like ever like after that like he always lets me have a couple points you know just to make it fun or else it's kind of like damaging to my ego, I guess. But yeah, it, I, I guess he did bagel me. I didn't remember that. But now that I think about it, he probably did. Um, that was a while ago, guys. Okay. I, now I can get at least five points on him. No problem. All right. No problem. All right. But um, next question. How badly uh, can you be your brother in singles, mix, and doubles with your regular partners? I mean singles. Yeah, you you just said that already. Basically, yeah, singles. Um, and... uh, doubles. Uh, with Yuting or Cadmus? Are you talking about? Uh, um, I mean, if I was playing with Derek, uh-huh. which would be like right, and then I think me and Derek, no matter if it's Yuting or Cadmus, we would get it. It would be a competitive match. It would be a like. We will have some back and forth, I guess. I would say. I would say. Yeah, we'll have some back and forth, but it won't be like a competitive match. Now. Like that, like <laughs> we played actually. No, 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 no. Me and me and Derek, we actually played you and uh Cadmus and UBC once. And it was actually it was competitive, I think. 
You know, it was competitive. I think it was competitive. Because yeah, we made it competitive. <laughs> I guess, I guess. But I, I mean, the toughest part was just getting the serve out because Ricky stands so close to the net. It's kind of scary sometimes. It's, it's, it's actually pretty ironic for me to admit that because I do the same thing to people. But yeah, it, it, uh, that's like the, that. <laughs> yeah, Ricky's very good I at know serving. Tony too well. <laughs> yeah, Ricky's very good at serving. I only, I only, I have that problem, you know, so, but yeah. I get. I think it will be competitive. And yeah. then for mix, I think for mix it will be like um, a big difference because you know, with I think the girl is really important. Yeah. In mix and and all of my mix partners are, are like a lot more mature than your your mix partner, and yeah. that really make, makes a big difference on the court. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I get that. I get that. That part I get. That part I get. Although my mixed partners are great, I just want to say mixed partners are great. I don't want I don't want nobody texting me after this. But yeah, um, all right. Next, last question. Last question. Do you have any modeling gigs? Modeling gigs? Um, mm -hmm. I mean, <clears throat> I used to model like for a couple of brands before, but not anymore. I mean, I just I just try to like, you know, make myself look good, like. That's all. It's not like anything fancy, like just trying to be a model or something. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, Ricky has taken some really nice model pictures. Like, like I see it sometimes in his room where like it's like in their little book, you know, he, he actually looks really good. Ricky can be a model maybe sometime in the future. Hey, if anybody's watching and you want to sign Ricky as a model, go maybe send him a contrast on. Maybe he'll take a look at it. Who knows? Right, Ricky? Yeah. But that is the end of the podcast today, guys. Thank you guys so much for watching. And hopefully you guys enjoyed this Thanksgiving special with Ricky. Thank you, Ricky, for coming in. I appreciate it. Um, I still don't remember what I'm like forgetting to say, but there, there's something in my head. I just don't know what it, what it is, but uh, maybe I'll remember it sometime. I don't know. Um, but yeah, thank you, Ricky, so much for coming in. I appreciate it. Uh, thank you for inviting me. It was, it's a really nice interview. Yeah. Thank you. Um, hopefully I'll get it even better, you know, with as it goes on with the podcast but thank you guys so much again for supporting this podcast i truly appreciate it i know i don't say it too much you know um but i i do i am very thankful for everybody uh watching and listening to the podcast every single time i post we've been consistently getting more than 100 views every single video so that's really amazing guys and i truly appreciate it um we wouldn't be able to do that without your support so i definitely thank all of you guys for everyone's support this thanksgiving and i hope everybody has a wonderful Thanksgiving, staying home, you know, being safe, uh, you know, from the coronavirus and everything. So thank you guys so much. And I'll see you guys in the next one.